In this week's episode of Flea Market Rescue, we're going to take an old metal plate that I got from the thrift store and using a little rice paper and spray paint, turn this into a gorgeous piece of home decor. Next, we'll take an old jug and a crock that I got from the thrift store and using special techniques, we'll turn this into stunning pieces of kitchen home decor. And lastly, we'll take this very plain, unfinished basket that I got at the thrift store for $1.99 and using some embellishments, we'll turn this into a beautiful piece of farmhouse wall decor. So let's dive into this week's projects. One quick note before we get started, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I hope that you'll consider doing that. And make sure to ring the bell, that way you'll get notified every time I post a new video. So I bought this metal plate at the thrift store. I bought it because I love all the detail here. I'm not a big fan of how it looks right now because it's just like tarnished and it's metal. But I think it would look gorgeous in white and then let's go ahead and sand that a little. Bring out some of that detail. It's going to be gorgeous. Okay, so I have this outside. We are going to use some of this um, Rust-Oleum Flat Protective Enamel in Flat White. So after spray painting the entire thing, I think it looks great and we're just going to let it dry. Doesn't this look so much better white? So we're going to distress this with some sandpaper and then look at this, you guys. So this is rice paper. I got it at Sweet and Sassy Treasures and it's $3 a sheet, but guess what? It doesn't bubble. You don't have to worry about it. I love the chandelier. We're going to kind of cut that out and then we're going to place some wording in there too. So let's distress this and then we'll get on to it. I'm going to take a little sandpaper here and we're just going to rough up so we can expose that detail. Can you see how cool that's turning out? Love it. So we're just going to do that all the way around. Oh, I still have some black from a previous project I did. Okay, so we have distressed it all the way around. I'm gonna even do a little bit on the dish itself. See how we're doing it around. I think that looks pretty good. So now let's go ahead and do that rice paper. Okay, so I have some Mod Podge and that's what we're gonna use to put the rice paper on. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and we're gonna cut out the chandelier. We're gonna cut it as close as we can. Okay, so we have our chandelier cut out. And I think that's gonna look gorgeous on this plate. And let's see what else we can put on here. Hmm. Let's try to cut this out here. I'm trying to get as much of the design as I can in there. That's why I'm cutting it in pieces. If I had kept it in the original form, it just would not fit because of the layout. So you just wanna play around with your design, try to figure out what looks best, and then once you have the design the way you want it, then you can go ahead and Mod Podge it on there. I'm gonna take this key off there. 
the keyhole is just too big and I'd rather just have the crown, the wording, and the chandelier on there. And I'm just kind of shaping up the side here. Once we have it the way we want it, we'll go ahead and glue it down. But for right now, I'm just trying to work it together. I think I'm going to do it all in separate parts here. Okay, I like this like that, so that's what we're gonna go with. So again, we're gonna use that Mod Podge. I'm gonna put some on the back here. And what's nice about this rice paper is you will get no bubbles. So, and then uh, maybe we should move that down a little. I'm gonna move it down just a little, just a hair. I don't want the crown sitting too close up. Mod Podge on the back here. And we'll place that on top here. Smooth that out with your finger. Let me make sure I have some on the back of this. I think I do. No, I think I'll need a little more. That's perfect. Now for my favorite part, the chandelier.
I think I'm going to add this in just to balance out the other side of this. Could probably glue that right there. That should balance that right out. Looking pretty darn good, huh? I wonder if I can fit these back in here. See, I had to cut them apart because this would not fit all that in there. It was just not lined up right. Now, if you had a bigger working area, you probably could do that. But for this particular one, I could not do that. Probably could cut this part off and line it up to the chandelier like it's being cut off and then finish with this. I think that's what we'll do. So I'll put a little bit on the back here. We'll slide that right up to the chandelier. chandelier. So it looks like it's being cut off. That way we get to use more of that design. So pretty. Oh, I see that there's not enough Mod Podge on this. Hit that right here. anything else on this we want to add no nope. I'm happy with that I think that looks really good so we're gonna stick with that and then we're gonna add some Mod Podge right on top to seal this in This plate has really come a long way and I think it turned out gorgeous. So I got this jug at the thrift store and it was regular $14, but today was half off all blue tags, so I got it for $7. I'm hoping it's not an expensive one. There's no markings on it and uh, we're gonna do some cool stuff with this. I also picked up this crock here, and again, it is half off, um, blue tag day. So I got this for $4. It has, I don't know, peaches on it, and we're gonna do something cool with this too. So this is sort of like a project deal, to, um, you know, both of these together, it's one project. Okay, as you know, I bought that jug, and I also bought this crock that has pears. I'm not sure. Anyway, we are gonna use these IOD stamps. These are my favorite IOD stamps. They're the crockery stamp. Love them. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and use those on that. We're gonna use some paper clay, and I think we're gonna do this one on the large jug and let's see what other one should we do probably the marmalade I like that one too that one's a good one if you've never used paper clay this is what it looks like it's called creative paper clay I love using this I've been using it for years and um, it's really easy to work with so you just take a little bit of paper clay, you put it on 
what you want to put it on, and then we're gonna take a stamp and stamp it. So let's do that. Okay, I've wiped up this jug because it was pretty dirty because I think it's old. <laughs> Okay, I just had to look this up on eBay. Um, I didn't want to put clay on something that was worth like hundreds of dollars and was really like over 100 years old. But no, this is only $16.69, so we're fine. Okay, I just cleaned up this jug here. And I'm going to lay it on its side. And then we're going to take a little of this paper clay here. comes like this just like it's real pliable and we're gonna start to smear it right in the middle here just kind of press that all down you're gonna need a large enough amount so that your stamp can go completely in the middle there if you don't have enough clay on there you're gonna cut words off we don't want to do that so I'm just going to keep smooshing that down. And you can use water on paper clay too, just to smooth it out. So I'm just kind of feathering the edge a little. You want to pat that all down as flat as you can get it. I'm going to use a little water, not too much and just kind of smooth that out a little. Let's see if that's gonna be big enough, which I think it is. Yeah, I think that should totally be. Feather out your edges a little. Make them thin so it's not a big clump. I mean, it, it's gonna be clumpy, but it doesn't. you don't want it really clumpy. All right, so let's do this. You're gonna take your stamp and you're gonna place it directly in the middle and then you're gonna press down and really just indent those letters into the clay. Once I feel I have a good impression, I'll peel this up. But for right now, I'm just making sure it's all in there. All right, let's do this. Let's peel it off and it should be beautiful. Look it. Oh, that is perfect. Okay, so we're gonna let that dry overnight and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna paint this. Now, if you remember, we got this little crock here, and we're gonna do the same thing that we did with that big jug. We're just gonna add a little paper clay to it. I'm gonna smush it down. I love working with paper clay. If you're wondering where can I get some paper clay, um, I have a link in the description. You can go there and just click on the link and it'll take you right to the paper clay. As far as the um, crockery stamps, you can check with Sweet and Sassy Treasures. They might have them. Um, also on Etsy, you could find them there too. I know Etsy was out of them for a while there but I think they might have gotten some in since then. Okay, let's see if this is big enough for that. I think it is. So we're gonna do the same thing that we did with the jug. I'm just gonna press that, get that centered there, make sure it's straight, and then we're gonna press into our paper clay. Now I've had people ask, don't you have to glue this? With this paper clay, when it dries, it dries very hard and you should have no problem with it. I never use glue 
However, if you are worried about it, you could always put a little bit of glue down and then smush your clay and that would just, you know, assure you that nothing would happen. Although again, I never use glue. I just use paper clay like this. All right, so I'm gonna peel this off and we'll see what we got. Wonderful, look at that. Came out great. So we are gonna let this dry and then we're gonna paint these. Okay, it is the next day and this is completely hard on there. Same with this one, so let's paint it. Okay, so that is drying. We'll just see what happens. Probably gonna need two coats. Okay, so this is all painted, all dry, and we're gonna take some of this Wise Owl Black Wax. And we're just gonna brush that on in all those little crevices to make the lettering stand out. I'm going to put a little on this too. Go ahead. You're just going to really rub on there. And if you get too much of this black wax, all you have to do is add a little clear to it. I'm going to just really rub in the letters. Okay, I'm going to Take this cloth, and I'm gonna wipe some of that away. I don't know if you can see that really good, but look at that. It looks like old crockery. I mean, it technically is, but this just adds a lot of character to it. So I'm gonna finish doing the rest of this because you just don't want the front having the black wax. So just really rub that all in everywhere. I'm just gonna Wipe that. We're gonna do the same thing with this one as well. You're just gonna take your black wax and rub it really good into all these crevices. See, I'm rubbing really hard on that and you think that the paper clay would come off, but it doesn't. It just dries really hard. Trying to get in there really good. And then we're gonna wipe off the front. Isn't that looking awesome? I'm trying to get in the other letters a little bit more too. going all the way around this whole crock. 
And then we're just gonna wipe it. I love my black wax. It's just such an awesome product. Okay, so I think that looks really good. Okay, I think that looks so cool. So I have this greenery. It's vintage greenery. It's, you know, plastic and looks really cool. I'm gonna put that in our jug. Just add a little more to this. And I think it looks awesome. Let's go ahead and stage it. But first, you know what? We're gonna need something for these. So we're gonna use my mom's hand towels that she gave me. We used that on another project. And then we're gonna use these wooden spoons that I've been collecting. I think that's gonna look awesome in here. So nice. These two are my favorite right here. Okay, so we'll just kind of organize that a little and then I will show you the finished project. I love adding hang tags to a project. I just think it gives it a nice finished look. I just made these and you can find these in my Etsy shop for $2.50. We're gonna cut this one out here and we're gonna add it to our jug. So all you're gonna do is just cut it out. paint and wax on my hands from our last project. Okay, so I have this cut out. Then I bought these at the dollar store. All you need to do is just punch a little hole right where the hole is. And then we're gonna add a little piece of jute. You can get this jute, you know, at Walmart, at, I mean, anywhere. You can really get it anywhere. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut enough jute. And then we're gonna tie that around like so. There we go. We have one hang tag and we're gonna put that right onto our jug. Tie that around the handle here. I think that just adds a little more character and Look at that. What a great duel. This is so plain. There's no finish on it or anything like that. That's probably why it was $1.99. But I think we could do something really cool with it. So I think we'll paint it white, we'll add greenery in the middle, and it'll make a nice display in a farmhouse kitchen or a dining room. So let's go ahead and do that. I have this paint by Annie Sloan. It's like a dark brown, and it's gonna act like stain. I don't actually wanna use stain on this because it's so cheap that I think it's just gonna soak in and it's not gonna look good. So let's use some of this. I think it'll work out better for us. We'll put that on and then we'll paint over it and then we'll do a little distressing. a little water and then that way it'll act like stain. See how that looks more like stain where I had just put paint right here. So if you add a little water, brown paint can act like stain, just so you know.
again, we're just doing this because we're gonna paint it white and when I do a little distressing, I don't want this natural wood to come shining through because that's gonna look cheap again. So if we just do a little wash on this and this brown, I think that will be ideal. back real quick. Oh, 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 I thought I broke it. <laughs> See, I told you it's very chintzy. That is looking really good. It looks like it's stained. It doesn't look cheap anymore. And we're just gonna let that dry. Okay, so our basket is now dry. See how that looks? Looks so much better. But um, I wanna paint this white, so let's do that. Okay, I'm just using some bare paint. It's in pure white. And I'm just gonna start painting this. Okay, so that looks pretty good. We're gonna let that dry. Okay, this side is dry. We're gonna flip that over and paint the other side. Okay, so our basket here is painted white. It's all dry. And I'm just gonna take a little sandpaper and just kind of rough that up a little. Okay, so I have this lamb's ear I bought from Hobby Lobby. It's one big strand, and I actually am able to do a lot of things with it. I can drape it over something to give it color. I can make wreaths out of it, so it's, sometimes it's better to have the big strand. This one was $19.99, but I got it at 50% off, so it was only $10. So right now, we're gonna make a little lamb's ear um, wreath that's gonna go in our basket. Okay, so we're gonna take our basket here, we're just gonna kinda see how much we need, how big of a circle. I think that probably should be good, so I'm gonna cut that. So that's gonna make a cute little wreath, and we're gonna secure that with some wire. You just want to loop that around. I want to make sure that the best part's showing. Okay, I think that's pretty good. And we're just going to take a little piece of wire and just wire the two parts together. Normally I would use my wire snips, but I don't know where they are. Cutting these with scissors really dulls your scissors, so if you can cut them with, you know, some clippers, wire snips, it would be better. So let's put that in our basket and see how that looks. Actually looks really cute. 
So now what I think I'm gonna do is probably hot glue it in because I want it to stay there. So I'm gonna heat up the hot glue gun and we'll glue this in. I have this cute gather sign that I got at Joanne Fabrics for 99 cents. And I think that would look really cute in the center of this. So we're also gonna glue that in there. Okay, so we made our little wreath and now we're gonna just glue it down to this. So I'm gonna just put a little glue I'm just gonna hold it in place while it's drying. I think that looks pretty cute. And then, like I said, we have that gather sign, so I think that should probably go in the middle. I can glue that as well. I'm just gonna put a little pack of glue on each side. One right here, maybe one right there, and maybe a dot up there. Okay, that should hold that in place. Let's glue that down. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Any strings of glue, just pull them off. And I think that's super cute. This weekend, we are going to Springfield, Ohio. I cannot wait. They have the best flea market there. I look forward to it every year. I'm going to make sure to take a lot of film footage, and I'm going to take you along with me. So look for that next week. We usually fill our cart to the brim, and we take multiple trips back to the car. So see you next week. So if you like this episode of Flea Market Rescue and you want to see more episodes like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. I'm Kelly Sherry, and this has been Flea Market Rescue.